afternoon, everybody. My name is Trudy Nielsen, and I'm the Aboriginal Education uh, Resource Teacher for uh, Thompson County School District 73. And today we are going to be delving into the Indigenous Group of Seven. This is my son. <laughs> and he's going to be following along with me today. So this is going to be a series of three uh, pieces of art, uh, appropriated art. So when I say uh, they're appropriations, we're copying the style of the artist. So uh, we're acknowledging the fact that we are copying and trying to do something similar to the same piece that we've chosen to, to work on. So um, today's artist is Daphne Ojig. And Daphne Ojig was instrumental in getting First Nations art into the forefront of contemporary Canadian art. And her work is considered to be Eastern Woodland style or pictograph style. But um, uh, the piece that we're doing today is called And Some Watch the Sunset. I've done this uh, piece with quite a few classes in the district actually. And you can do this with a primary class and they work out beautifully. Just uh, use use medium or tools that are uh, geared for that age group or intermediates. Uh, you can you can she's a painter, but you can use paint, you can use pencil crayons, you can use crayons, you can use belts, you can use whatever tools you want um, for the coloring part of this. But I like to start with a sharpie. So this part is just basically a direct drawing piece. And Bentley's going to be following along uh, with me as I do it. And even though it's a directed drawing piece, it's still going to be unique in its own between each um, artist that, that does it, um, especially with, when the color comes in. So it starts, and I just, you know, I didn't even go to the art store or anything. I just found all these materials in my house. Just, it was, I had some old, a poster board laying around so I just uh, cut it up and I've got this this piece here in the middle and I'm protecting my walls from the markers and that. So is this falling off here? Be careful. So how we start the piece is with the treetops and the treetops are kind of like cloud-like um, images so but not cotton candy clouds, wispy clouds. So I like to start with a, a wispy treetop, kind of like a cloud in the middle. Not too small, not too big, because you want to end up with at least five or six of these clouds. So I'll start with the big one in the middle, so that it's following along. And then out of that cloud, I'm going to do another one. And I always want them to, to come to the edge. Okay, and now I see I'm going to do another one up here. Come to the edge. I'm only going about a third of the way down because I don't want the treetops to be, you know, taking up half the page, just the very top third of the page. And then out of this big cloud, I'm going to do another one. As I said, you want to have about, you know, five, six, seven. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to do one more here, I think. There's my wispy treetop. Um, oh, I hope that you can see it. Okay. Well, well, I think you can. No, you're, once you get the color and just finish off the, like this right side. Here, it looks like it's not going to be formed. That's okay, you can probably just join it up like that. Yeah. It'll still work, you'll be able to color that in. That's not a mistake at all. And I really believe that there's no such thing as mistakes in art. Because you can always fix it up at any point in time with the mediums that you're using, the colors. And that you're using. we're forced to use a sharpie. Yeah, okay. Next, I'm going to put a teepee in the middle. So she was from Ontario, and um, uh, we don't have traditionally teepees in this territory, in the Shakotan Kulu. We did have conical shaped structural homes for summer uh, that were smaller than teepees and had the frame, 
but had um, mats, so uh, tule reed mats that went around that were lightweight and easy to take up and put down um, for a quick um, movement around the territory. So now we're going to do the teepee. So you can either go up and down or down and down. But I'm going to go um, about, you know, the bottom third of the cage. Nice big triangle. And then I'm going to do sort of a wispy, just a little circle. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle for the doorway. And then I'm going to do the background line that goes behind the teepee. So I always like to give the example of going invisible when you're doing a line behind a structure. So this is going to be my background line. Invisible, invisible, invisible and all the way over to the other side. And then we're going to do four tree trunks, two on each side of the teepee. We want to leave space in the middle behind the teepee because there will be a sunset there. So I'm going to go, and it doesn't have to be a perfect straight line. Like her work is not very geometric um, with its shapes. So it's really wavy, wispy, um, Nice. So that's my tree trunk. My other tree trunk. And then over to the other side, I'm going to start one here. One, and two, and another one here. And now we have four tree trunks. And then we're going to add another um, far in the distant background line, like a, like a horizon line because the sun will be coming um, or setting on that line. So this is where your eyes can play tricks on you. So you've got to be really careful about not drawing on top of the tree trunk. So you're going to go from behind. So just slightly above the, the top of the teepee area. You're going to start right from the edge. Get to the tree, invisible, invisible, straight, get to the tree, behind the tree, invisible, invisible, and all the way over to the next tree stop, go behind the tree, invisible, 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 and to the other side. Yeah. Well, stop there and then start there. Yeah, invisible, invisible, yeah, perfect. So you've got it basically a straight line. If it's not straight, it's going to look good no matter what. And then we're going to do the sun, so it's just a rainbow line. Yeah, I'm not sure. Nope. There's no mess ups. No, I was saying stop because I was explaining. So then I'm going to do a nice big sunset in the middle. And <clears throat> I'm going to do some designs at the top of the teepee. So the teepee, and this is an interesting bit of information that I learned recently that um, of course, teepees were put up in the plains, and, and one way that families could decipher which, uh, which buffalo skin theirs was, was, or their hide, was because it had uh, their own family like crests on it, so different designs. So I like to actually put anything from a zigzag line to diagonal lines to circles to dots to straight lines. Um, it's up to you where this becomes sort of your own personal part of um, the piece. So I'm going to start with some straight lines, a circle at the top, do some zigzags, maybe another zigzag, maybe a straight line, maybe some, I always like circles, maybe another straight line. Don't go overboard, but I mean, do what you feel. I've seen some students um, even put wavy lines, and I've even seen some students put some designs on the bottom of the teepee. So this is where the color comes in, and this is where your personality comes in. And I like to just put some parameters on color, because if you start using too much color and it starts to look rainbow-like, Rainbow light can be 
beautiful for certain kinds of artwork, but for this, you don't want every color in the rainbow. Uh, her work is, if you look, there'll be a, a link to a slideshow on our district website um, that talks about the Indigenous Group of Seven, but you'll find some samples of her work um, on that, and then you can get a better idea of her colors. But I like to say for the treetops, uh, either you choose warm or cold colors. So you have to think, is this a uh, picture of summer or fall? So in the fall, obviously treetops are going to be warm colors, reds, yellows, oranges, pinks even. And in the summer, they're going to be bright greens and blues and those kind of really fresh, crisp colors. So you decide. Um, obviously, it's going to take too long for us to color everything in here right in front of you, and I don't want to do that. So I will get started. And as I said, this is... Uh, for primaries or intermediates. And intermediates, I like to use the pencil crayon. I actually have done this with paints on canvas, but I actually prefer the pencil crayon. I mean, you can do so many different kinds of shades and you can use a different pressure to have, you know, part of the piece, lighter color and outline it with a darker pencil crayon or, um, or I've seen some students do all dark um, pressure, which takes a little bit longer and it's a bigger commitment, which is fine too. I mean, they just, uh, they all just look so beautiful when they're done. For the younger ones, crayons even are really effective. Like they're, I have some samples that I'll include on that slideshow that are just absolutely like fabulous, just so beautiful. So I'm going to pretend even though this is, um, so you're not going to, what are you going to use, felt or pencil crayon? I'm going to use crayon because <laughs> this is what I had and I have lots of really nice, like a nice selection of colors for my crayons. I only have a few pencil crayons here, so I, I do want to have a good choice of colors. So I'm going to go for a fall, a fall tree. So I'm going to use my oranges, reds, yellows, any shade of each. And I'm going to go in with a, you want to have at least two colors for your treetops, two or three, and you don't want the colors to go side by side because then um, you don't have that nice mix. So if I'm doing a red one here in the middle, I'm not going to do another red one right here. I'm going to choose a different color. And the colors don't have to be realistic. Um, I do kind of, I mean, I've seen students do purple tree trunks. I've seen students do blue tree trunks. And it all works as long as the colors complement each other. And Or if you want to use a brown, use a brown. But as I said, um, I will, and I'll even put, um, some of the samples changing colors for the one that's next door. And I'll even put some sample pictures in the link below in the description so that you can see the different, just the variety of different um, finished results. And they really do look completely different from one another when they're done, just based on color choice and the pressure that you use with the medium that you choose and um, the design of the TP and like they are individual. So I'll just do a couple more of my treetops or maybe like one more. And always obviously, you know, keep whatever direction you're using to color your your work stick with the same direction from beginning to end so that there's that consistent and Daphne Ojek she has uh, a lot of pieces that she even though she does mainly like use paint as her medium she had a lot of um 
she had a lot, a lot of pieces in, in pencil crayon and they're beautiful. And she actually ended up moving out to Kelowna later in her life. And you can see the difference in her style when she moved out west. Just, you know, because obviously her, her work was influenced by her environment and where she came from. Um, and her, the landscape of the land in the eastern woodlands. But when she moved out to British Columbia, you could see, you know, the landscapes of her paintings change and just everything that was in her work was more like impacted. British. Hmm? Yeah, she was impacted by it. She was actually, so it was, it was actually officially called the Professional Native Indian Artists Association, which she was a, a huge influence on getting started, which brought, like I said, Aboriginal artists into mainstream contemporary Canadian art. And she received many awards for her work. I always say, hide the white, because she doesn't really have any empty or sorry negative space in her work like it's just covered in color from all parts so i'm going to leave that for now i'm going to do the um the tree trunks i'm going to do one tree trunk and then i'll do, I'll do a little bit of the tp i think i like to say too and this isn't the the rule i just like to see it kind of come together in a cohesive way so i say if you've chosen a fall, a fall piece where the colors are warm colors, bring it together by doing similar colors for your teepee. So it's sort of not all over the place. So I think for my teepee, I'm going to do um, a orange. Oh, what's this? This is kind of a nice yellowy dandelion. Yeah, that's beautiful. And again, like you can go back and outline parts. I've seen students do dark, like around the outline, and that just gives it a really nice effect. And the inside of the teepee door is black. And you can kind of get a little bit fancy with the designs too. Add some highlighted colors in there. Hide the white, hide the white, hide the white, hide the white. Make it vibrant and colorful. And, oh, you know, I'm gonna go all the way to the top of this. And then I'll go back and highlight the top with some different colors that complement the color of the teepee. I'm gonna go in with black for, I'm actually gonna use this black marker for the inside of the teepee. Make it really dark. and fill it right in. Okay. And I'm gonna do my sunset. Well, you can do different, kind of like blend your sun into like I think I'm going to do a really heavy pressure for the sunset to make it really vibrant. Go slow around the edges so you don't go outside. I like the crayons because they cover a lot fast, but the Pencil crayons are just, if you 
make them go in the same direction the whole time and use different pressures. You could just create a lot of different beautiful effects with the shading of it. It's like if you do if you do blues and greens, it's like even like a wintry color, right? Like the sun can feel like it's blue in winter when you're looking at the snow and it's all everything is blue in the winter. Okay. Now I think I, I do kind of like uh, my tree trunks to be brown. It does kind of go, and I'm going to do them dark as well. And when I'm doing lessons, sometimes I rush and then I get kind of messy because I really want to just show the students what it sort of can look like. But and I don't want this video to be too long. So if you if you do decide to tune out, I will have our finished products in the description and I will add some student samples um, from past lessons. And, and then you guys can get going. And like I said, just find whatever materials you have around your house and just have fun with it. It doesn't have to be done all in one sitting. Your hand can get tired. There's a lot of coloring because you have to fill the whole space with color. So, you know, if your hand gets tired, take a break. Come back to it. Okay, so you get the idea, the tree trunks. I think I'll do one more little piece before I let you guys go, and then I'm going to finish it on my own. I'm going to do a nice, oh, you know what, I really like this kind of uh, green yellow for my um, foreground. Oh, that's a really bright green, it's like fluorescent. Oh, yeah, you got a little, what do you call it when you do a outline? Outlining really makes a difference, too. And she does, if you look at her piece, her treetops have actually, you know, they might be green with blue outline, or yellow with green outline. And yeah, she was 97 years old when yeah. she passed in 2016. She was 97. A lot of her pieces have, uh, uh, a lot to do with her community and her family and you'll see a lot of images with people in them and they're just heartwarming there. It just seemed like she was a really beautiful, loving lady. Okay, you guys, I, and then this is the, the background. You could, you could make that water, you could make that just, you know, another, you could make that a field of green. I think I will. And I'm going dark with this again because I want it to pop so. You could even do brown, as long as it's not the same color brown as your trees. Okay, it's starting to come together. So I'm just gonna leave you guys with that. And, and I hope that you actually give this a try. Like I said, if you happen to have a canvas laying around, you can do it if you have some paints. You can do the same thing, draw it out, paint it. They're still really beautiful too. But that's what I love about this piece. You can do it in so many different ways with so many different mediums. 
Okay. So I'm going to carry on finishing my coloring, and so is Bentley, and I like the colors you chose, Bentley. They complement each. They complement each other <laughs> so far, and um, that's all for today. I guess I, I'm going to do another two more. So we'll do Jackson Beardy, and we'll also do Norval Morso over the next few days, and yeah. So tune in. Thanks for coming by, you guys. Now it's done. As you can see, the pier. Yeah. Bye. Superior painting. Drawing. <laughs>